Not a bad fish. A little spinnerbait bass. Large mouth. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> little pound and a quarter fish right there. Folks, I'll tell you what. Today we're at Apache Lake and I wanted to come out and throw some top water and have some fun, but man, the wind is blowing so hard. When the wind blows, what do you throw? You throw a spinnerbait. Pulled out my Persuader spinnerbait, half ounce, chartreuse and white with a little gold blades on it. Early in the morning when the, water, when the water's a little darker, throw something with a little color in it. Plus we have smallmouth in this lake here at Apache, so see if we can't catch up a few fish on this spinnerbait. You know, this time of year, we're here in the fall, beginning of fall, you can, these fish are scattered all over the place. So one thing that's a lot of fun to throw is either a spinnerbait or a crankbait. Because we're around these weeds and these trees and stuff like that, I kind of thought, well, I'll throw a spinnerbait to start with and see what happens with this wind blowing. And I'm just slow rolling the bait, that's all I'm doing. Real easy. 17 pound test line, gold blade, wind blown banks, and the fish should be scattered all over the place, feeding up. Now there was just a tournament here two, week, or, uh, two days ago. They had a two day tournament, so actually I think the last day was yesterday. It was the weekly series, and I heard some nice fish were caught, so I got a good friend that uh, is in our White Mountain Bass Club at home, Doug Copeland, that came out and caught a couple of sevens and eights. He said he had a blast. Maybe we can get lucky and catch a few of those ourselves. But I'm gonna start with a spinnerbait, something I love to throw this time of year. See if we can't catch a fish or two on it. You gotta have a start spot, you know, and, and what I like to do is, we had our choice of banks. We could go fish that cliffy side over there but the wind is blowing in on this bank, so I want to be on the wind-blown bank if I'm going to throw spinnerbaits or cranks, you know? So that's what we're going to try to do here, see if we can't catch a few fish up. You know, I think it's real important to understand that when you're throwing a spinnerbait, I know I talk to a lot of folks and they email me quite a bit about what size line and what kind of rod do you use for a spinnerbait. I use a medium-heavy Taipan rod. This is a 7.2. And of course, the 17 pound test line, you're throwing a reaction bait. And if you do get bit by a big fish, you want to get it to the boat. If I was throwing a crankbait, it's a little bit different because you're trying to get it down there. You know, you can get away with 10, 12 pound test line, especially in this open water. But uh, and we may go to that. If the wind keeps blowing today, we'll, we'll check it out and see what might happen. We'll just play it by ear. We'll try to find out what's going on with these fish. Hopefully we can get just a couple of nice quality fish today. See what we can't come up with. Pound and a quarter fish, small fish, but a good starter. See where these fish are hanging out at. There's a good one. <laughs> Off the walls. Go to my go-to when it gets tough. Oh! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, son. Oh. <laughs> he was hanging right on those walls. I had to stop and do the wall thing. I, I have a tough time passing that up. That's just too much fun right there. Here he comes. Oh yeah, that's a good fish, folks. That's a real good fish. All right, you're done, you're done. That's a three pounder. Get over here. Ah, that's a two, good two and a half anyway. <laughs> I had a tough time passing by this spot. I was going by and I'm like, eh, it's so hard to pass up good water. Man, he got that right in the right spot. There we go. 
Whew. <laughs> Those are the kind of fish I like to find on the walls right there. Just like that. You know, we've let this fish go. You know, <clears throat> I've spinner baited, I've crank baited, the wind's blowing, and I thought, man, that spinner bait bite's gonna be on. We spinner baited and we crank baited for a couple of hours. And I gave it an ample time to do something. Now, we, I, I think with this big wind coming in, we're actually sheltered right now, but out on that main lake, there's some pretty good swells out there. But I was gonna go down towards the dam area here at Apache, and I just have a tough time passing up some of these wall fish. When the fishing's tough, you're not getting bit. You're gonna have to learn how to do some of that drop shot. And all I'm doing is throwing it out there and letting it fall against the wall and you'll feel it. You'll feel the fish actually pick it up. And the other thing I'm doing is I'm throwing a curl tail, throwing a curl tail bait when the wind blows and when you're throwing up against these walls, that little tail as it's falling is swimming down. And I think you can get a little bit of a reaction strike out of it. We tried to get up and, and fish some bushes and things like that, but the wind's just blowing so hard. That's why I thought that spinner bait and the crankbait bite would be on, but this cold front coming through, that's one thing about the fall, man. Sometimes this time of year, those cold fronts, and we got a full moon, we're dealing with the full moon, you know? So that's not a good thing either. I'm using a six pound liter, quarter ounce weight, a lot of folks think they got to go to that real heavy weight, but sometimes that little slower fall works pretty good. I, I kind of like that quarter ounce weight. Unless the wind gets to blowing so hard you can't feel your, you know, feel your line going down. It gets a little spooky when you're out fishing, you know, and you think the fish should be biting on something and it, it's not happening. At that point, you know, try different baits. We've tried crank baits, like I said, and fished them for quite a while, and just were not getting the bites I thought we'd get off of it. There's a bite. There's one. He caught it on the fall. Oh, it's a good fish, too. <laughs> I don't think he's quite as big as that last one, but it's a good fish right off that point on that ledge. Oh, he's going to run a little bit. You got him in open water. As long as you drag set on that light line, you got it made. It's still a good fish. Very good fish. They'll eat it on the fall. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Little drop shot bass right there. All right, he ain't quite as big as that last one, but he's still a good little fish. All right, we're starting to figure out a little something something. That took a whole five minutes from the other one right there. Beautiful fish. These fish are healthy in this lake, very healthy. You know, when you're fishing that bluffier stuff and you're dealing with a little bit of wind, sometimes when you're drop shot, especially, there's a big difference between throwing a curl tail worm and a straight tail worm. Straight tail worm will fall and you'll get a natural fall out of it, but that curl tail with just that little bit of action on the back of it as it's falling, I get a lot of hits on that curl tail on the fall. It's like it's swimming down or something, and they will get it. See how that wind's just bowing the line, but that's okay, I'm gonna let it fall. If I'm just letting the bait fall a lot of times, I'll, you can either go straight with the wind, which is a lot, good a lot of times, but so you can feel your line go with the wind and as it's falling, because you're hoping they hit it on the fall, that way you can kind of stay with your line a little bit. So I'll move the boat up a little bit, and then I'll throw straight down with the wind. That way the line doesn't bow so bad on me, and I can feel it. There we go. Littler fish. Well, I don't know. Yeah, he's a littler fish, but it's a fish. By golly on them bluffs, look at that. Let me get those rods in. <laughs> Little drop shot bass. I'll tell you what, when it gets tough, just get along them walls, you'll catch them up. Oh, come on. Ah, got it. It's almost like the farther I go down these walls, the smaller the fish are getting, but 
beautiful little fish. About a pound, pound and a half, pound, pound and a quarter, somewhere in there. Nice looking fish. Boy, I'll tell you what, I just had to retie. I'm glad I retied. I broke off my drop shot weight and, and had to retie. There we go. Let's try it again. I'll tell you what, man, when you get up along these bluffs and just let it fall down with that little tail, sometimes it'll make the difference. Let's throw right up against those bluffs. What's cool is we got, we're kind of sheltered from the wind a little bit around this corner. It's amazing how you can go without bites, trying different techniques and different things. And, and uh, you know there's gotta be some fish, you know, some active fish somewhere or some fish biting. You're hoping to hit a ledge on these bluffs. You really are. You'll throw against these bluffs like this. You wanna hit little shade pockets like that, but you're hoping that it falls on a little ledge or something that you can at least maybe work the drop shot just a little bit, work that arm off of it and let it slide off of it. But if it doesn't happen, sometimes there's, there's holes in the rock as it's going down that they're hiding in and they'll, they see that thing dart down, they'll come right out and get it. Now, the one thing that's really important about doing this kind of fishing is you wanna be sure that your drop shot and your worm actually get really close to the wall. If you miss it by five feet, you're missing everything. You wanna throw up against the wall and let it fall down. I see so many anglers miss the wall by three to five feet. And at that point, when you're sitting in 40 foot of water or 50 foot of water or even 90 foot of water, it's time to, you know, recast. Right off that point. Oh, <laughs> he's still not a real big. They're getting smaller as I go down, but we're still getting bit. So it's hard not to, uh, to keep working the, working the bluff wall here. Got him. That's a good fish right there. He hit it on the fall without a doubt. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about, son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> when you find the fish, you don't leave them. Look at that. Came right back to the bluffs where we started catching them. And you know, that could be one of my tip of the weeks right there. Is a lot of times when you find an area that you're catching fish in. And we went down this bank and we caught fish in it. We just pulled up, just pulled back up after letting it rest a little bit. Came right back and I just caught that fish. Tell you what, you don't know how important it is not to leave fish. A lot of times, you know, if you let, a, let an area rest, man, I'll tell you what, you can come right back and catch those fish. There's something bringing those fish in. The shad are probably moving along the bank here. It's deep water, boat's in 86 foot of water. The bait's just falling down that bluff, just falling, 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 all of a sudden, tick, come right out and grabbed it. But I'll tell you what, it's very important always to go recheck some areas that you caught fish in, never leave fish. Got him. Oh, nice fish. I knew there was a fish down there. <laughs> that one I drug out a little bit into about 25 foot water, 30 foot. Nice little bass. Well, we figured out steep and deep for sure. Anytime we come up to a bluff, I keep coming to a bluff, I catch a fish at least we have something to go off of. You know, when you're getting bit and you're catching fish like this, you can always later, you know, if you feel like it, try some other stuff, try some other areas, you know, try some different techniques. But if you like getting bit, then, you know, like I said, that's, that's what I'll do. I know that there's a way to catch these bigger fish. I want to find a way, but it's fun getting bit. <laughs> Thank you.
got him. Oh, that's a decent fish there. I can feel him pulling. <laughs> Ooh, man, he's heading out for some. Ooh, baby. That's a good fish. That is a good one. <laughs> Come on. What in the world do I have here? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> that almost feels like a catfish. Don't tell me. That is a big fish. I don't want to lose it. I got that light line on there. The way it was swimming out. Oh, oh, that's a big old largemouth. I think. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, son. Right there. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at the size of that bass. A little drop shot bass right there. Come on. You're done. You're done. You just made my whole day. Come on. Open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Beautiful fish, Apache Lake bass. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Yes. That's what you come for. Fish them walls, catch fish like that, baby. All day long. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness. Was that a fish or what? First I thought I had a catfish the way that thing was coming in. Tell you what, folks. I've it's been, it's been a good day on Apache Lake. We found something and we made it work for us. And you know, the thing is, is a lot of times you go out and you try your reaction baits like we did this morning, just wasn't happening. This cold front blowing through the full moon and uh, it, it's just a lot tougher right now. But we're going along these walls and catching them. When all else fails, if, you know, anytime I've ever felt like I'm getting spun out and I can't find the fish, if I go to walls, and a lot of times, whether I'm at Roosevelt or what, if I can find steep bluff walls, I've always felt comfortable fishing those, and, and I'm sure you will too. Just really remember, it's very important that you put that bait right on the wall and let it fall down. Don't miss that wall. That's going to be the difference between you catching fish and you not catching fish. Hey, we'll see you on the water next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>